everyone. This is Sheila Butler with Successful Women Talk, and I am excited today to provide you with this special interview. We have special guest, Christy Tasker. Now, Christy has a wealth of experience in retail, interior design, and had pivoted that and turned that into social media branding and marketing expert. So Christy has recently published a book titled The Power of Pinterest. Not out yet, but will be soon, and we'll keep you posted on that. But this interview is uh, you know, packed full of information that you can implement today in your small business. So she has a company, CEO, CEO and founder of a company by the name of Puddin' Out. It's a show, social media marketing company. They can manage your entire social media strategy and campaign but she gives us a lot of tips in this interview if you're a small business owner and can't yet afford or don't want to let someone else handle your, your social media for you she gives you some tips and tricks that you can implement today so check out this interview with Christy I think you're really gonna enjoy it and also be sure and go to our website and sign up for our email list we will send you to your inbox new interviews business tips and tricks and anything fun in social media so thanks again tune in and let us know what you think about this interview with Christy Thanks. Hi everyone, this is Sheila with Successful Women Talk and I am excited today. We have special guest Christy Tasker, new name. She just recently married. Isn't that right, Christy? That's right. That's, that's exciting. So she, Christy is an award-winning retailer and interior designer turned social media consultant, public speaker, author. She's basically a rock star. So let's welcome Christy. Hi, Sheila. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. And I'm jealous because you're in Vegas and I'm in Texas. <laughs> well, you know, now you at least have a place to stay in Vegas. <laughs> hey, you never know. I may end up there. I love, love, love Vegas. So I'm going to ask you kind of the same question I ask everybody else is how did you get started? Give us a little bit about your background and how you got started in business. Well, I fortunately had great parents who owned a business, and um, my, my mom and dad owned a craft business back in the 80s. Um, I remember um, to start the craft business, my mom actually delivered newspapers. So she would pick me and my two cousins up from school, and our job was to go deliver newspapers with her. And in exchange, we got to go pick out candy <laughs> at a convenience store as we passed. <laughs> so... My parents worked very, very hard, and at a very early age, they taught me to work hard as well. So in the craft business, I obviously became the cashier. Um, my grandmother worked at the bank, so she taught me to count money back. I remember customers laughing, saying, you know, how do you, you know, you're six years, seven years old, how do you know to count money back? And I'm like, well, you know, I can count money pretty well. <laughs> so so um, from that point forward, my mom actually opened an interior design firm just north of Atlanta in Swanee, Georgia. And that was in 1997. And believe it or not, I was working at a bank at the time. And she's, she's going, come on, come, come work with me. And I'm, I'm saying, no, I don't really want to, you know, I don't really want to do this whole working with the parents thing. And um, so she ended up convincing me to come to work with her. And the very first task that she gave me was to... Um, to go and find specific things that she needed and, you know, like fabrics in, in allotments of like 50 yards. And, I, and I'm saying, mom, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a more convenient way to do this. And she's like, no, I'm telling you, there's not. It's, you know, you're just going to have to do this. So Google had um, just really, you know, I just heard about Google and I thought, well, there's got to be a way that I can I can find these fabrics for her because I did not like running around town trying to find the, the <laughs> right eye lots of fabrics. So that was my first deal on Google was to find her the fabrics that she needed. And um, then from that point forward, it was, you know, I was like, why are you paying retail for these items? Like we could be ordering them right in. We could, you know, just go and, you know, stock an entire house. So one day while she was gone, um, on a design project, I had the first rep that I'd ever called in. Um, she kept buying these rooster lamps, and they were they were <laughs> John Decker rooster lamps. I'll never forget them. And they're from a company called CBK. And with CBK, the rep came in, and she's like, "Well, you know, you're going to have to buy twelve of these." And I said, "Well, okay, that sounds like a lot, but we're already buying about six a week, so I think she'll be okay with this." So I placed a very small order that we thought was a really big order at the time. I remember my mom coming back going, <laughs> what are we going to do with all this? So so her house at the time was already a kind of a showcase for, you know, what she was doing. So I just said, well, we're just going to kind of make it a store, but nobody will know. We'll just tag everything. 
And, you know, we already had some things tagged, but not everything, because some of the things were her personal belongings. <laughs> so we started selling <laughs> off everything. So the, the, her house at the time became a store. And before we knew it, we had merchandise arriving on her back patio, like we're unpacking and people were finding out about it because that's before, you know, like big box stores really had, you know, the TJ Maxx's of the world didn't, didn't really exist in big form then. And then a lot of people also knew about my mom's um, interior design business. So, you know, I, you know, from an early age, I learned, you know, to source things, to find things. And of course, Google became my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so from that point forward, um, the city would no longer renew our business license Oops. where we were because they said we had too much traffic coming and going. <laughs> um, so we bought the house across the street and opened a full service interior design firm. I actually started running, running the design portion of it because we figured out that my mom was better off in the store doing displays because that's what she loved to do. And that's not really, was not really my forte. And I took on the entire project management of the interior design firm. Um, Interesting. So for advertising, we would advertise in local magazines. We would advertise in major magazines. Um, and, you know, before too long, we, we, our attorney, oh, I should go back to this. Our attorney said to us, well, you have to um, keep up with, you know, how this business is coming in. And I was like, well, yeah, that's probably a good idea. But that would mean we would have to go back and put all of these thousands of items on a POS system. She says, you're just going to have to do it. Have a sale. And so we did. And we started tracking every piece of inventory and every customer that came in the door. So every sale that would be rung out on our POS system, we would say, you know, how did you find out about us? And uh, it was required, a required field in our um, QuickBooks POS. A lot of people ask me, you know, what POS sure. system to use because they don't know how to set it up. And it's just a field that you add. And um, we would track exactly how people found out about us, whether it was through a magazine, a friend of a friend, or just a drive-by. So we would know where to spend our marketing dollars. So at the time, we had these billboards and all these, you know, all these ad campaigns running. And I noticed them starting to decline around 2004, 2005. And I was just like, hey, guys, we have to figure out something. So what we figured out was that drive-bys were bringing in the majority of our business and word of mouth. So at the time in 2004, we had a, a company meeting and I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. All the billboards are coming down. All the ads are coming out of major magazines and we're only going to advertise. We had two magazines at the time. One was a bridal magazine. The other was just like a little local magazine. My staff totally flipped out. <laughs> you know, you have to be crazy. There's, what are you doing? I said, but the good news is we're going to buy a Hummer. And they said, okay. And I said, we're going to polka dot. It's going to look exactly like our gift wrap. And it's going to have our logo on the side. And our gift wrap was basically when it was magnified onto the Hummer, you have six inch polka dots. Okay. And they're six inches apart. So that sounds like, oh, she's got a polka dotted Hummer. Well, when you see it, it's <laughs> polka dotted Hummer. Yeah. This polka dotted Hummer became, you know, like a magnet for people because they wanted to know what it was about, you know, what's in this... Not only do, were we in a pink house, pink historic house, that's what our store was in, but we have this polka dotted Hummer, like these, what, what are these people doing? Um, so the Hummer was great. And um, then one night, um, and I want to say it was 2006, 2007, I noticed, actually 2006, I noticed my daughter, you know, she was on MySpace and she was so infatuated with these, these things called Webkins. And she would say, Mommy, can you take me to wherever I need to get the certain webkins to play the game? And I'm just like, what is this web? <laughs> so my best friend worked with me. And I said, Lucy, look into what are, what are these webkins? You know, what are they? Macy's infatuated with them. And so we looked into them, and it was a company called Gans that we were already carrying some of the home products um, in our store. And so with Gans, we took we, – we, obviously bought the webkins our rep was like that it really doesn't fit your store and we're like we know plans <laughs> because we knew that the kids were on myspace talking about webkins so um with my daughter i'm you know i'm just kind of looking over her shoulder to see exactly what she's doing i'm like macy who has these web 
napkins and she's telling me, oh, the store is like 30 miles away. It's an independent retailer because they were only selling them to independent retailers at the time. So needless to say, we had, I want to say our first Webkin's order was $5,500. That's a lot of napkins. <laughs> That's a lot from napkins. the 12 roosters. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we would post on MySpace when the Webkin's came in, what was really happening with the Webkin's. And then we also did some campaigns called Spot the Dot. Um, so if you could spot Dottie, the polka dotted Hummer, out and about, and you could post either a picture or exactly where she was, you know, just say where she was, the kids would get a $5 gift certificate. So Smart. Sometimes a $10 gift certificate because we would have double days. Um, and, you know, you think about it, we were trying to sell basically $100,000 room packages, or not really room packages, but home packages. Um, and we were, bringing, we were bringing our audience in because we knew that the kids, ha there had to be probably two computers in the house in order, for, um, in order for the parents to really let the kids on the computer because these are really young kids. You know, they're not going to let them on their only computer in the entire house. So we knew that probably had to be our demographic, even though these, these fuzzy little animals are really kind of ugly, totally didn't fit our store at all. <laughs> so that's how I got started in, in social media. So, you know, MySpace was the first social, um, social site that we were on, and then obviously Facebook shortly after. That's fantastic. I love how you, you guys started out really small. You didn't know anything about, like, I mean, you guys knew how to start, have a business because you were being successful, but you had to go back in the back end and put your, uh, you know, your QuickBooks system into place. And then I think the biggest thing that took me is, like, you had to figure out your branding strategy. And your branding strategy was you guys figured out Dottie, which was amazing, and the Pink House, which, again, is amazing. And then you probably, from what I hear, and, and I know I worked with you guys some with uh, Aiden Gray, my previous company, and you guys had gr such great Southern personality and customer service no that's that's amazing and speaking of customer service I'm glad that you brought that up when you know one one thing that I think made us very successful was the customer service we treated everyone as though they were someone that was that was our, our motto treat everyone as they're someone it doesn't matter you know if they're coming from a tennis match or who you think that they are because um, we took the Ritz Carlton approach so, you know, I, I, I've always believed, you know, when, when you like service at a, at a certain level, no matter what, you can take it, no matter what your, your level and your, your open to buy your dollar um, amount is that somebody might spend with you, they always want to be treated well. Um, exactly. So, I mean, to this day, I treat my customers, um, you know, in my social media business the same way. Um, it's a matter of showing them, don't just tell them. Um, you know, that's, you know, the whole Ritz Carlton approach. And, you know, here in Vegas, we have the Win, and pretty much everybody from Win, including the general manager for Win and Encore, was trained at Ritz Carlton. So that's one piece of advice that I have as we're going through here today is to make sure that, you know, if you're in a customer service environment, that you read the, the, the um, Ritz Carlton way of doing things. And, that's, and I'll link that up in our show notes as well. I think that's, that's a great point. I, a lot of people don't get that. You know, a lot of people are thinking that social media is they can just it's going to save their business and it's a part in my opinion of the whole strategy but it is engagement and customer service is engagement and social right. media Absolutely. is engagement you people buy from people and people that they like and so treating people well I used to make all of my employees not make them I used to it was part of our um, orientation process to have every customer read that book raving fans so it's a quick read, but it's very important. You want to deliver more than what someone's expecting. Give them that wow factor. And if you can treat them well and with respect, it goes a long ways. It really does. I'll never forget, um, we had one, um, one group of, um, just so happened to be one of some of the Falcons football players' wives come in, and they weren't well-dressed um, one day. And I'll never forget them, them t telling someone, well, I, I don't. I don't like the way they treated me because they thought that we thought they were going to steal something. Okay, <laughs> and and it was so funny because one of our really good customers came in who had sent them, and she said, "Oh my God, they you guys treated them so well. They weren't used to being treated like that in like without being recognized or anything sure. like." That. And they thought that we thought they were going to steal something. That's the reason they, they thought we were kind of following them around. Or what, they realized that that was our level of customer service. So it was so funny because later on they became, I mean, they were fabulous customers 
from then on. We actually called them and said, hey, look, you know, I, it's our understanding that you may have thought this. We treat every customer like this. This, If you send your friends in the door, they're going to be treated the same way. If you want to be left alone or don't, you know, don't want our you know, don't want our help getting things down or whatever, just let us know. You know, we're, we're here for you if you need us, but we're not, we're definitely not following you around or, you know, we're, we're kind of like your personal shoppers and right. most, most of our clients like it. If you don't let us know, we're, we're happy to, to do whatever. <laughs> so I, I love that. So let me ask you guys, how long did uh, you guys have the business on Beyond Tech? We, I was in it with my mom for 10 years. Um, she ended up keeping it open for another, about another year um, after I left, and then she realized, you know, hey, it's not quite as much fun. <laughs> well, and then she didn't want to be tied down to. Sure. So, I, I, you know, I respect every retailer that that I have as a client even today because, you know, I totally get where they're coming from. You know, my designer clients, you know, call and say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna, able to make this appointment because, you know, because I've got. And I'm like, look, I totally get it. You've totally been there. Where coming from absolutely because, you know, they need to give their customers the attention that they need. And, you know, anything else is really secondary. I totally agree. So let's say you, you kind of got in on social media early because you played in the, you, you were quick to pick up on the ability with MySpace. And so you, well, also you were an early, kind of an early adopter of fa Facebook as well. Right. So you realized early on that that was going to have impact. Definitely. Um, I knew because college kids, you know, it was a way for them to communicate. And then even, you know, as young as my daughter was, I knew it was a way for, her, you know, that she was communicating with her friends. Although I'm not saying that I liked everything going on on my side, <laughs> because I totally didn't, you know. But, um, you know, not only was I there to mo monitor really what she was doing, but, you know, w when, when anybody's talking about a product or exchanging advice, you know, it's a, it's a third party recommendation. And, you know, the reach on social media is massive. You know, the average Facebook user has over 150 friends now, and there's over 900 million users. So, you know, how can we ignore the possibilities for advertising? Um, and, you know, and if you can get someone else to recommend the product, I mean, there is no better way to to get, get a message out um, very clearly. But, however, it's not the typical form of marketing like a lot of people think. Um, it's it's really a more casual approach. And what what I find a lot of companies do is they don't take the casual approach um, to marketing on on social media. They try to use the same marketing strategy all the way across the board, and you just can't do that. I agree. People love um, personality, and, and like I said earlier, and I think you were saying as well, people want to deal with people. And if it's yeah. such a strict and straight and narrow brand that's too formal, it I, I don't find that they do well in so in social media area either. Right, definitely. So, so how I mean, important do you see social media? I know we've kind of talked about this, but you know, like in retail, I I we talked about this before we started recording, but I help a lot of clients in retail and wholesale as well, and interior designers, and they they don't have a social media presence and. How important is it for them, and, and why do you think that they don't yet? It's it's really it's it, that's really a, a phenomenal question because you know what we've discovered in, in Swanee, Georgia, which is thirty minutes north of Atlanta, twenty miles north. Um, we, I want to say, eighty percent of our sales, if I'm remembering correctly, eighty percent of our sales were coming off of a social media platform. Um, when I say that, I mean even walk-in customers were coming because we posted something online or somebody was asking if we had something. Um, you know, you've got companies like Zappos that are only online customers, I mean only online sales. You know, I mean obviously all of their sales come from, from an online um, way, of, a way of doing something and social media is a major player in every aspect, whether it be a physical um, brick and mortar location or, you know, an online retailer. Because you got to think, like companies, like for instance, Zappos uses their social media, um, social media strategy. Twitter is used to handle customer service issues because right. tweets fall off the map a lot sooner where Facebook posts stay on for pretty much ever. So they handle social media issues on Twitter. Um, Facebook is used for more of a feel good place. Um, where now Pinterest is used to really show, you know, showcase outfits, showcase, you know, products and collections, and it's really driving a lot of traffic um, to their site. 
Um, the pennant button's been huge for them. So, I mean, it, you know, to think that social media shouldn't be the major part of an advertising strategy is crazy. I agree. Um, it really is. I mean, it surprises me when some companies spend, you know, five or $6,000 a month on a billboard, but they don't want to spend two or two or $3,000 on their social media advertising when it can reach more people. Um, the and, other, and very targeted as well. Very targeted. Absolutely. Um, one thing that we use Twitter for is actually finding people with specific interest and we can tweet with them based on their location. So we know exactly where they're at. If they're close to a store, if they're close to a buying point, um, we can tweet with them and say, hey, have you, you know, have you thought about coming in, you know, register you're close by? And sometimes they're like, oh, you did. You're paying attention to what I'm doing. Right. And people are surprised that they can do that. That's one of the, the things that we do, you know, with our software. It'll email us and, and say, you know, so-and-so is nearby, it was, is it within five miles, and they just said this, you know. And so we can start picking up the tweet and um, being able to really monitor and get that customer in the door for some of our retailers. Gotcha. So we'll kind of transition a little bit and make, talk more about your company and your software. But so how, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't have time to do all the social media. And, and it can be overwhelming. So we have companies out there like your company. So how do you help companies, businesses, small businesses manage their social media? Well, basically, we uh, within our, our software, we can pre plan all the post tweets auto mentions I mean we we can pre-plan a lot of it so that way our customers know what's going to be being said but then there's a moderation strategy that goes along with that so they don't have to worry about logging in making sure you know while they're ringing a sale you know we're tweeting with the customer the other customer that could be nearby or just right outside their door um, and it, you know, my advice to companies who don't want to hire someone, I mean, I completely understand, you know, if you want to try to moderate yourself that you need to check in at least every two to three hours at minimum. Um, you're probably going to miss the, the nearby tweeters. Um, but there's nothing you can do about it, you know, and, and in just hopes that you're catching as much as you possibly can. But you also have to develop, you know, a strategy of, you know, are you going to use this for customer service? Is it going to be to promote product, but in an indiscreet way? Um, and then making sure your website's maintained for social media. That's also a really big deal. And give it, like, what do you mean? Like having social share buttons on there or? Share buttons, the pin up buttons, just a way for people to be able to communicate about a specific product with, with, without the call to action being really anything that the customer really has to think about. Right. You know, they should hit a button and everything kind of happened for them. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you think about it, we're like the like society. So instead of, you know, everybody texts, no one calls anymore. So it's easy to say I like something instead of telling someone I like it. So it's the same thing on their on their uh, website, even if it's with a product. You want that like button there because it's easy. And the easier you make it for the customer, the easier they're going to share that information. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then also on the pin it button, you know, making sure that your product descriptions are included when someone pins Oh, that's you know, that, a great point. That's, that's a big thing that, that, that a lot of companies are missing out on on their websites, just making sure that the, the descriptions actually pop up, which is, you know, part of the coding that needs to go in. So you might have to spend a little bit of money when, when you want to participate in a certain site and make sure that everything is properly linked back to your site. Gotcha. So how much in general does it cost a company? So if, I, if someone said, I'm a small company, I really want to have an impact in social media, but I don't have the time. Maybe I can do a little bit of it, but I can't do it well. So you have packages, like do most companies like yours have packages that a company starts with? Yeah, we, we, have, we have packages that start at a, a reasonable rate compared to most social media companies. However, it's not cheap. I mean, you should sure. think of it as replacing a billboard or... Um, right replacing probably a, a larger ad that you have going on. It's not it's not gonna be a you know your weekly newspaper ad fee. Sure. However, it could be your monthly newspaper ad fee. So exactly. it just depends on what what you know is coming into play because what we won't do is we we won't take on a, a project that we feel we don't have the funds to do a really good job with. That's you know? a good because no one wins. Yeah, nobody wins. Exactly. exactly. You know, I was reading an article recently, and I would, I'll have to link it up. I can't remember exactly who it was by, but the article was talking about, you know, how much does it cost for social media? And, and the average was for someone to run your social media campaign fully and well, it could be between $2,500 and $10,000 a month, depending upon 
where you are, what you want, how aggressive it's going to be, because it you're having someone step in. It is a full time. It can it is, be a full time job. Yeah, it is yeah. full time for sure. And 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 those those price ranges are about right. Yeah. I mean, that's just what it runs. A lot of a lot of times people say, well, why can't I get anything for less than twenty five hundred dollars a month? Because you, nobody can do a good job if somebody's quoting you that. Basically, you know, we'll do a setup package for companies. You know, if they, if they want everything set up, keyworded, but not moderated every day, or a moderation strategy that's probably not going to work, and that we're going to make you sign off on saying this is probably not going to work, but sure. you know, do it on your terms to show you that you know something like this can work for your company on a trial basis. That's you know, great. That's you know it, it, it's you know every 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 business has their struggles, but but social media can help accomplish a lot of what people don't realize it can help accomplish. You know, the minute your orders come in um, or your inventory comes in, you can post it. You can actually pre-post it. You know, I tell retailers for market, why do you wait until you get home? You know, use social media even as a, as a market research tool. I agree. You know, for what color to buy? Ask your audience what color should I buy? Orange or blue? There what it is. Yeah. What are you looking for? What would you like to see? I think it's just going back to it's almost like going back to where we were in the beginning of you deal you live in a small town and you deal with the local butcher. It's the same thing. You people you have to you have to think about it. you have to talk to people. It's all about engagement and communication and I think you have to ask your customers if you want to know. And some I, people are afraid to do that. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of like, you know, I have a lot of I have some retailers that oh no, I don't want to ask them that. It's like why? Let ha let them feel like they have some sort of you know impact on what you're doing because yeah. when they feel like they have an impact and I think at ambiance we always let our customers know that they had impact on what they what we were doing. I think um, that's a great point. You know, we always had our eight what we called a listers. You know, ambiance a listers and some some of my retailers now go well. I don't want my customers to know they're they're in my top 100 because they only bought you know a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Who cares? Let them know that their thousand dollars matter. You know? People, people the, like recognition. Yes, absolutely. I mean, and we all. Just, yeah, and people want to know that you care about them. And if it's just something really simple, like, "Hey, you are in our top," or "You, we remember that your mom had a birthday last week. How'd that go? You bought a gift for her." It could be something very simple, but it makes such a huge impact. Exactly. You know, the other thing that we would do is always we would we would call husbands when their wife's birthday was coming up. If we oh, that's smart. Something. You know, I mean, so. You know, there's there's a lot of different strategies that people don't think to use, but we, but you know, with social media, that's the formality that we use to be able to reach those people, but within a within a much, you know, much easier on a much easier platform because now we can do it automatically. Insert their name; they think that we've sent out this message specifically to them sure. to remind them of something. That's awesome. So if you had someone that was a small business owner and they wanted to kind of get their feet wet in social media and they couldn't afford to dive in you know, with a big package right away, what are maybe like a few tips that you could give them that could kind of just get them started on, kind of on the right path? Well, the first thing that they need to do is set up their accounts and decide what each one is going to be used for. You can't push the same content all you know you can't push the same content to Pinterest that you are to Facebook and Facebook to Twitter I know that you know you can link them together I do know that you have the option to do so you have the option to go from Facebook to Twitter and Twitter to LinkedIn don't do it though because it's different information that people are on the various sites for they're on LinkedIn because they want you know if you're an interior designer LinkedIn is a great place for you but you can't speak about the same things that you do on Facebook you can showcase your work on Facebook and ask people what they think about it and provide the link from LinkedIn but it's a different strategy and different moderation so you know making sure that your accounts are properly set up that you have a strategy for each one and making sure that everything every blank is filled in you know that every blank is basically a keyword and a keyword is something that can drive traffic to that particular site um, if you'll notice now a lot of um, a lot of if you if you do a Google search, Facebook, LinkedIn, a lot of times is, is one of the first first um, keyword searches that actually come up, and people don't think about it. They don't think about every every word that you're entering is actually a keyword for something somebody might be looking for. Sure. So you know, think about what do you want people to find you for? If it's a certain brand, you know, make sure that you're using that as a keyword in your description regarding your store, and 
or your business in general and making sure that you um, have all of your names streamlined. Um, so in other words, the name of my company is putting out. So it's facebook.com forward slash putting out Twitter forward slash putting out LinkedIn um, is my, obviously my name. Um, and then uh, Pinterest forward slash putting out. So you want to make sure everything is, is streamlined across the board. And I know some companies, you know, depending on your business name, you may not be able to do that. Um, you may have to, you know, you may have to come up with a shortened version. But keep in mind that is that is going to be a major um, traffic force for you. You should be able to be in a coffee shop and tell someone, oh, you can find me on social sites at forward slash whatever, whatever your, your word is. So I find that a lot of companies don't don't have that set their domain set up properly. So that's one of the first things that I recommended that they do. Um, and then next, you know, making sure that you have content. How often are you going to push content out? Is it going to be videos? Are you going to are you going to do YouTube videos like you're doing here, Sheila? And I'm sure you have a strategy every day, or not every day, but every week. You know when the videos are going to be released, so that way your audience knows. Right. So, you know, just consistency. And then I always say this lastly, make sure that you do not go on social sites unless you are going to monitor them. So Good set up point. your alerts. Don't be there unless you're not going to monitor them. Um, I, I use this example. You wouldn't dare have a customer in your store without greeting them, saying hi, saying hello, or answering the question that they've just asked. So it's the same thing. Online is, is actually your, your world's greatest store. You have an opportunity to reach people from, from everywhere. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're, if, if you're going to be there, that you're going to mo manage and moderate it. And don't go eight hours without moderating because the people think you're ignoring them. Yeah, and, and they get frustrated. Yes. And they're going to pass that on. And word of mouth socially online is, is worse than word of mouth was when we were, you know, gossiping in our cities. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's much easier now. Much easier. Much, much it's easier. Mistake, and you know, a lot of people say, "Well, I'm not going to do it because I might make a mistake." Well, if you make a mistake, say you make a mistake. You know, say, you know, "Hey, I'm really sorry." I mean, I know, like during my wedding, I missed, you know, a couple people's responses to things, and I just said, "Hey, look, sorry, I was off getting married." You know, sorry, I missed your response. I mean, you know, missed the. But here's the answer to your question. I think that is a fabulous point because even when I was teaching at a college when I was younger, the same thing is. You know, I don't know everything. I just go in and say, "Man, I don't know everything," but I, I can find it for you. I think admitting that we're not perfect and and people stop trying to be perfect. No yeah. one wants perfection. People want to see even on social media that you have some flaws. They want to see that yeah. you're human. Oh yes, definitely. And they want definitely. to see a little personality. I'll never forget, and this is this is kind of a funny story, and I probably shouldn't tell us, but when when oh, please we were, do when we were when Henry Weinacker and I, that's the guy that I wrote the book, The Power of Pinterest, with. When we were setting up our Pinterest account, one day um, Pinterest changed their terms and conditions, and he just made a little graphic really, really quickly. We love you, Pinterest. Thanks for changing your terms and conditions. And he spelt Pinterest wrong. Oops. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's just doing this like off the cuff. It was really kind of funny. And he called me and he goes, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? And I said, we're going to make it into a contest. And, and he <laughs> said, what? And I said, you know, congratulate the first person that caught it. Thank you so much. And we're sending you a T-shirt. <laughs> I love that. Catching our mistake. <laughs> see, that's great. It makes everybody see that you're human. Yeah. So exactly. let's, let's transition. Let's talk about your book. Okay. So ahead, the, book, the book, The Power of Pinterest is, and I'm sorry, my dog is. We love Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Power of Pinterest um, was written really on a whim. Um, Henry and I had been wanting to do a social media book together. And he came up and said, you know, and, and he actually lives in the same building that I do. And he came up and he said, well, let's, let's get started on this book today. And I said. <laughs> right now. Well. I can't really do it today. He was, I said, I have, you know, some, some issues that I've got to take care of with my software and stuff like that. He says, no, if we don't do it today, we'll never do it because we've been saying we were going to do it. He's also in social media. And I said, well, okay, let's, let's make a list of what, what social sites we're going to write about. What are we going to write about? So we list them all. And I think we listed like 11, like 11 topics, you know, including Facebook, obviously. Um, and the first one was Pinterest. And, I, and we started writing about Pinterest. And before we knew it, we were 
he was writing, I was writing. I said, okay, you know, you're going to, you're going to take this part. You're going to do this. You're going to do this case study. It was, you know, kind of funny him being a guy, he had different things that he wanted to write about than I did. Um, he certainly wasn't interested in writing about the bridal portion of it. <laughs> and, um, so we never got off of Pinterest. So we just continued with Pinterest because we, we were so enthralled. We started interviewing companies like Zappos, Bergdorf Goodman, um, and how they were using Pinterest. And um, the next thing you know, we have a book on Pinterest only. So it was kind of exciting. But at the time, we were finishing up um, in January. And um, yeah, January, February. And we just kept adding, you know, because things <laughs> continue so much. So every time we would get something back from the editor, matter of fact, we've even said this week, no joke, this is it. Yeah, like we're done. It's already, it's already, it's, it's already edited, but we just keep, you know, we both are we're perfectionists. So we keep trying to change things in it. And so we've just decided that we're, we're releasing this book. And then the next one will, we will have a next, um, the power of Pinterest too, because I mean, it's changing so fast. Sure. Although you can learn so much from what's already there in the case studies, what people did right, what they did wrong. Um, I mean, it's, it's hilarious at the, at the things that people did wrong. Speaking of domains, um, it was really kind of funny because one of the funniest things that we write about in the book is AARP. They didn't obtain their domain, AARP. And a little girl, when you go to Pinterest.com forward slash AARP, it's a little girl's Pinterest site. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> so, so even major brands don't have their act together at all times. So you don't feel bad. You're not Martha Stewart. You're not AARP. But we point out some of the major things that, that brands have done right, what they've done wrong, and even some of the smaller brands, what the smaller brands did right early on, even photographers, um, um, bridal companies out of China, how they came into the American market and kind of stole some of the American market away. Interesting. Um, utilizing Pinterest. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. So how do you – I think Pinterest is an amazing – social media site. I love it. You can get lost there for hours. Yes. So if, what do you see the impact pretty heavily? The impact is, is beyond heavy. I think we, we don't even realize what the impact is at the very moment. We do, but a lot of companies don't. Sure. Um, if they're paying attention to the Google analytics, they should start to realize some major changes um, in, in buying power. Um, the Pinterest, Pinterest users actually purchase more when they get to a site than any other social site. Interesting. Um, they're also spending more, they're spending more money. They're actually buying when they get there. Whereas Facebook and Twitter, they may go look, but they may not purchase. But that photograph, you know, a picture, sp it speaks of a thousand words. So, you know, the photograph is everything. So, you know, that's, that's been a major part of, you know, traffic going to sites. And, you know, the more traffic and the more links that you have to your site, and it's called backlinks for those of you who are or are not familiar sure. or want what backlinks are, that's really all it is, is another link to your site from an outside source. And Pinterest creates more backlinks than any other social site because every time somebody clicks your pin it button, they are... Um, they're basically creating a backlink for you. So a lot of a lot of companies and a lot of web developers in the past have um, paid companies or paid to have backlinks created, and they don't necessarily have to do that anymore. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, it's like you said. I think having the photograph makes a huge. It's like building trust, and that we go back to that same thing that we've kind of talked about throughout this entire interview or chat is that. It's building trust, building relationships, and people see that, and they trust you more, and they like what they see, and they're more uh, likely to buy. Yes, they certainly are. And, you know, it's, it's also, again, a third-party recommendation. Um, when, when someone else pins something to their board, um, it's, it's like saying, you know, hey, I really like this. You should check it out. And it's like when, if one of your friends tells you that they like something and they've shown you a picture of it, you're more likely to pay attention to it. And especially, you know, Pinterest is great because you don't have to really read anything. You know, a lot of t a lot of times people are, you know, saying on the web, you know, we're going to become uh, we're going to become a textless society, really. But um, you know, it, it, it's nice to be able to see it and then read it if you want to. Um, but you know, the pictures being the main source. So, 
you know, if you're if you're not already on Pinterest or if you are, make sure that your your photographs are are of quality. I love that. I have a question to ask you. Like, there was some controversy uh, recently about the legalities of copyright issues and pinning other people's pin, um, pictures from Pinterest. And I think right. that the Pinterest um, their legal wording was pretty lenient. And do you you know anything about that? Like, you have any? Yeah, a, l a little bit. I mean, well, not a little bit, but a lot. Yeah. Um, so, so in the very beginning, um, you know, any social site, they you have to basically give them permission to utilize your content. Like even when you're signing up for Facebook, when you're if you read through the terms and conditions, you are giving them permission to utilize your words, utilize any photographs, and they're claiming them as their own. Okay. A lot, of comp a lot of people don't realize this, and with Pinterest, they thought, well, you know, they're going to print t-shirts up with my image, you know, they're going to utilize my image. No, they, they have to have that because your image resides on their site. So they made a few changes, you know, I know a couple of attorneys and photographers, you know, created a big stink that they were pulling their accounts and, you know, but they should also pull their Facebook and their LinkedIn accounts and even their Twitter accounts because... Some of the same terms are also, you know, on other social sites. Right. I think it's just more prominent, you know, where um, graphic artists and artists thought, well, on Pinterest, they're going to try to do something different with my images. I, I really don't feel that that was the intent at all. I can't speak for Pinterest. They Tomorrow they could, you know, change their mind and Ben and Evan could decide that they're going to, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna do, but I don't really think that was their intent. I think sure. it, was, it was just to get the photographs on the site. Um, otherwise, I think they would have, you know, started utilizing them, you know, to create things. So, you know, they made some changes to the terms. Matter of fact, we even questioned that within writing the book. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times we all think that everybody's perfect, and because a company has grown so fast, that they're big and they have all these big intentions. But in the end, I don't think they expected to grow as fast as they did right. and they didn't really have the staff or even you know that maybe the legalities or their things in place as many of us don't sure when when we're starting out um, there's there's another story that we tell in the book just to kind of tell you how fast they kind of grew even though they're you know Pinterest is a couple of years old actually going on three years old now um, that there was once a time when when Ben Silverman the founder of Pinterest um, just wanted somebody to recognize in, in, in the, the valley um, in San Francisco, right outside of San Francisco, they have what they call startup shirts. All the startups, you know, they wear their T-shirts, they wear them proudly. And, you know, the whole goal is for somebody to recognize your startup. You know, it's a really big deal. So he just couldn't wait for somebody to walk up to him and say, oh, I, I recognize, you know, oh, I love your site or whatever. So one night he's walking out. And he is in his parking lot, um, right outside Pinterest, right outside his offices. And this gentleman comes up to him and says, oh, I just love your site. And he's so excited. And he says, he, the, the guy says something like, oh, how, how is Jeff? Do you know Jeff? And he's like, <laughs> no. You know, there's no Jeff that works, that works with him. And so he looks down and he has on a shirt of someone <laughs> startup so Oops. it wasn't even it wasn't even the Pinterest startup so if that just kind of tells you you know to kind of help humanize who sometimes these big people are in our minds they're not as big as we think they are yeah they're not after they're not after our images and things like that maybe they just you know their attorney at the time could have been a you know a, 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 gra a brand new graduate <laughs> exactly you know, if they could afford something else you know yeah and, it's, and they're treading new water I mean it's yeah it, we're changing every like you said it changes every day yep and absolutely. I think I read some story about an attorney that was taken off taking her site down because everything she pinned would now make her in copyright violation because she pinned somebody else's picture without yes. it I, I just I am of the belief that it's better to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission yes and if you totally. have good intent you know what I mean so yes yeah I don't exactly. fear that either and and then if you kind of live by the morals that you're you know if, if you do something wrong to somebody it's it's gonna come back to you yeah. uh, karma 
So I don't think that they're in the, you know, I think on the karma bandwagon, I, I can't see them going around taking photography images and making t-shirts or, you know, note cards out of them. I don't think that's... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's I shit. totally agree. <laughs> now, I am going to link up uh, your website to your company, your new book, anything else that we've talked about that needs a link in the uh, show notes. But if someone wanted to reach out to you, where's the best place for them to contact you? Well, they can contact me on my website um, or on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash putting out, or even on Pinterest, pinterest.com forward slash putting out. So pretty much you'll be able to find me under putting out everywhere. Um, at LinkedIn, linkedin.com forward slash Christy Tasker. Um, so, you know, just look for me there. Or you could even do a search for Christy Tullis, T-U-L-L-I-S, or Christy Tasker, and you'll be able to find me. Perfect. Well, we will link everything up. If you've not checked out her website, please do so. Get the book. Learn about social media. Don't be afraid. Just get started. But use her tips because I think she has great points. Christy, we appreciate it. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.